I'm going to share a, a couple of notes with you uh, and our guests who are scheduled to be uh, with us in just a short while. Uh, joining us from Idaho State Police as well as the Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department. And we're going to have a conversation this morning. We'll, we'll talk about what we generally talk about, some of the issues that are coming up, uh, safety issues and the like, and just things that you should really be aware of. But also I wanted to talk a little bit about the difficulties of the job and how those may have been heightened in recent weeks by some of the, call it, you know, if you will, propaganda being spouted as well by the other side. Keep in mind that word propaganda, because that's what this country has turned into. Nobody any longer wants to tell the truth. They, they try to be politically correct, and then when they say something that an aggrieved, a so-called aggrieved group thinks that is, uh, is, is their right to say, and then there's some backlash to that, then they try to hide and say, well, no, wait a minute, that's not what we really meant. So nobody is actually getting anything what you would call along the lines of the truth anymore, or certainly not facts. A quick note, we have a new sponsor is uh, a new sponsor on the program who's going to be joining us September 14th in studio. Uh, Dr. Christine Pickup, Doctor of Audiology from Mount Harrison Audiology, located in Rupert, Idaho, 1218 9th Street, Unit 2, uh, mountharrisonaudiology.com online, and the telephone number is 208-312-0957. And just a couple of quick notes that we'll share with you. Hearing loss and dementia are linked. Hearing loss becomes a great burden on the brain as you have to expand more time or expend more time and energy to decipher what others are saying to you. Treating hearing loss reduces the strain and makes hearing more natural. Keep your brain healthy by taking care of your hearing. And again, uh, the doctor, Christine Pickup, will be joining us a week from Monday, I believe it is, in studio and Perhaps be willing to take some of your questions, too, while she's, uh, while she's joining us. It's 824, uh, 58 now, up a little bit uh, this morning, but not going to be really warm today. Keith Thompson from uh, Idaho State Police is joining us in studio, and you'll, you'll have another partner in law enforcement coming by soon. Uh, Ken Menzel is expected to drop by as well. Uh, the two of you obviously have very similar jobs. You have to go on the radio. <laughs> no, Everything that, is sergeant. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, people don't think about that, but... The role that, that in law enforcement, if you're like doing public information, is a 24-7 job. Yes. Yes. You're, you're trying to win the hearts and souls and minds, if you will, of the people by serving them in a professional manner and meeting the needs of the law. So You've got, a, you know, normally just a couple of things going on. I know we've got a big Labor Day weekend coming up. We'll start there. We'll get into the meteor stuff a little bit later. But Labor Day weekend is probably that last really big blowout for a lot of people it's the end of the 100 days the 100 deadliest days of summer if you will and, and it, it acquires a lot and we've had a like i said before on this program we have had a, a spike in fatals and so yeah there's a lot of traffic going on and everything like that it's a busy day and we have a lot of officers out if possible so i was going to say uh it's one of those days it may not rival Fourth of July with Independence Day drinking and, and Christmas drinking and the like, but it's still you got to be worried about that on the roads too. You got the camping drinking and the fishing drinking instead, yeah. but yeah, it's. <laughs> but uh, you know, and and we are out there, and, and our whole thing is to promote safety because we want to see you get home safely uh, as you're driving from point A to point B. So. And this has been a summer that has just been on the highways, uh, really nasty in Idaho. It has. It's been terrible this year. So it's a lot of fatals. I was going to say, in, in in your line of work, you almost have to constantly, you know, we used to joke in news that we, we could do a newscast where we would tell people, remember what it's cold outside, you should wear clothes. But you do have to remind people about traffic safety constantly because our minds sometimes wander. Well, everyone's a professional driver and uh, everyone's a great driver. But what about the guy next to you is, is something you got to be wary of. And it really is driving as a, a defensive and offensive uh, means, if you will, of transport. And people think their cars are safe, you know, and reality is, is when that car starts crumpling in and it's rolling with you in it, it becomes very dangerous. And, and I think people get overconfident in their abilities and overconfident in the safety that you got one single yellow line, or maybe two yellow lines, separating you from you don't know what that driver is coming towards you. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not a lot. I think sometimes when I'm driving, I'll see someone do something, and then you get that brief flash in your head where you think, you know, oh, that guy's a dummy. And then within 48 hours, you do something just as bad. You forget to use a turn signal or whatever. So everyone Correct. has those lapses. Yes, we do. And then, you know, the, unfortunately, there's also a new thing out there. It's not so much new. I know we've been dealing with it for a few years, 
where there's people that are suicidal that will drive their vehicles on purpose into oncoming traffic, especially for the bigger trucks and everything like that. So, I was going to say that's dangerous though for the other people involved too. Yeah. So speaking of dangers, uh, by my count, I think Sean Hannity said yesterday it was four law enforcers over two weeks in this country, but I actually saw uh, there were there was a memorial that was posted on Facebook. I believe it's. The number is eight law enforcers have been killed in, in two weeks' time in this country, which yeah. the, the numbers are high. Before we actually talk a little bit about some of the rhetoric that may be driving it, one of them at least was, it. it, it I think it showed the, the natural and, and daily dangers of the job. There was a fellow in Louisiana last week who responded to a domestic dispute. He got there, it was his cousin's house. Yes. And he was shot and killed apparently by the cousin. And it, it shows that I think domestic disputes sometimes are, are the most difficult things for anyone to handle because people are in such, I don't know, they're enraged. They're enraged. And, and when you're enraged, you don't really see, you know, see straight. And, and Karen would probably be easier to talk on this than this. We do rolling domestics. We don't do a lot of house domestics. But everyone knows it's a dangerous place to be because the emotions are playing. People aren't thinking straight. And, and someone that might normally not be a murderer in any way, shape, or form would all of a sudden cross that line and, and because of the rage that blinds them. And uh, yeah, the officer has to be always on 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 cue with that and, and be ready. So when you're when you're pulling up to a scene, there's almost a, a I guess a visual assessment that's going on at the same time because of that. Correct. You, you're already you're doing the what ifs. Officers are great at what ifs, uh, and and we should be doing that on every traffic stop, every encounter, every domestic, every time we deal with public. We're always doing the what if. And that what if is, what if this happens? How am I going to react? Because everyone knows action beats reaction. And so you want to have the best edge as possible as you're going into a scenario. So, I, I, I heard a, a friend say, well, we've got, a, we've got a break coming up in about 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds. So I'll have to touch base on this. He was a, he was a sheriff's deputy back in uh, Maryland many, many years ago. And he says that what they used to do is, no matter who it was, whether it were the troopers or the deputies or the local PD, if they saw someone had, had pulled, pulled over someone, you would quietly pull in behind the other car. And if the guy nodded you to you that it was okay, you could leave. But sometimes if he kind of gave you a look, you knew. So it, if, it is a lot of that picking up, sensing things going on. Yes, we have our little signal codes, if you will. So <laughs> I don't know that we should share those with the public. <laughs> it's 830. Keith's going to stick around, and we expect to be joined by Ken Mensel as well from the Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department. Uh, some law enforcement discussion going on this morning. It's 58, but, well, call it uh, almost 830. We, we have a crowded house uh, uh, this morning. Uh, Tim Miller is joining us from the Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department. And, uh, the, uh, of course, the state police are represented today, too, by uh, our good friend Keith over here, who's, uh, who's giving us a bit of a rundown on some traffic safety issues earlier. And uh, Keith Thompson joins us, I think, the first Monday or Thursday of the month. First Thursday of the month. And then... Tim joins us if Ken's not available. Um, Ken is handling another issue this morning. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> but it's important. So we'll, we'll mention that. Hey, quickly, Tim, the fair is going on. Uh, I was just looking at the uh, the rundown today of the schedule, and you've got uh, a couple of canine demonstrations going on. Going to be a busy day for your people out there. Yeah, it's, it'll. Uh, this kind of taxes us this time of year because – we uh, we have no vacations this week. Everybody has to work, and uh, so we just want to make people aware that be patient with the traffic. You know, if if you're going to the fair and you're going to some of these events, it's going to take you a little bit to get out of the parking lot. They got a new group doing uh, the parking, um, and so not deputies but uh, uh, civilians, and so that's going to take a little time for them to get used to it, and also just getting out of the event itself. Um, and then be aware of the traffic. It's, it gets pretty heavy traffic on Highway 30, pull line, and then, of course, everybody that tries to avoid those on the country roads, then uh, you think you're trying to do a shortcut, but it sometimes isn't. Uh, Ken said last week that one of the reasons that this is such a safe fair, though, is because of the law enforcement presence there. Um, we like to think so. We haven't had any uh, huge events there for years, and... Um, you know, and I think it, it deals with the crowds that we that we have and the people that we have here in the Magic Valley that, that we take pride in what uh, what we have. Um, and you'll see, like I said, you'll see a large uniform presence there in the afternoons and, and evenings. So, 
I, I wanted to, you know, we were talking before you came in a few minutes ago a little bit about the dangers of the job and how it appears that they've been really heightened in the last uh, several months. I, I was watching was it Sheriff Clark from uh, Milwaukee County on TV the other night, and he came right out and said, you know, this is this is what is happening is people are being emboldened because they're hearing this and they think it's it's okay. Do you see any of that on the local level, or do we remain sort of isolated? I don't. I don't think we're isolated. I think it's starting to escalate. Uh, I was talking with a candidate that was going to apply for the chief of police here in Twin uh, last week, and I was saying that just like here in the city, you're, you, we're approaching fifty thousand or at fifty thousand. We're right at that tipping point where we're going to that next stage of what a city should be or uh, or should handle. And are the people ready for it? And is the community ready for that? What comes along with growing? Uh, and we're having growing pains. Uh, and it isn't necessarily people coming from the outside that um, are committing these crimes. It's people that are here that just have a lack of respect for authority and a lack of respect for government. For um, I mean, it, it wouldn't matter if it was Keith or I. It, it could be a, a street worker. It could, it could be anybody telling them what to do. They just have a lack of respect right. for that. I just uh, I was telling Keith during the break, a friend of mine sent me a video from Dover, Delaware, where police in that city last week, which is a little smaller than Twin Falls, they took down a fellow who was a probation violator. They did. He ended up pointing a gun. He was shot. It, was, it wasn't anything that was going to kill him. And as they were trying to take him away, just out of nowhere, it almost looked like Mogadishu. This mob showed up and surrounded the police officers. And I was I marveled at how calm they were during all of this. But these people are so close, you don't know if someone's going to grab for a gun. That anger is just seemed, it seems to be getting up. People almost seem to believe that they've got permission to do it. Yeah, it's become freer and freer because uh, of the rhetoric, like you said, that's going on. And, uh, you know, when you... Uh, lose that uh, common sense fear and respect, it emboldens you and, and no one thinks, you know, that anything's going to happen when they're in the group. When you're in the group, you've got security. Is that, if everyone's doing it, then I'm going to do it. It really is a, a foolish disposition as well. But, you know, if everyone, you know, it's like our parents used to tell us, well, if, you know, if all your friends jumped off the cliff, would you too? Well, yeah, they're all jumping off the cliff right now. And it's those same people when they're in trouble, it's going to be calling the police and they're not going to want that mob surrounding the police when they're helping them. But this is the thing, too. I know that in places like New York City, they're saying now that, uh, and, and Baltimore, and some of the really big cities, that the, the, the law enforcement is simply having difficulty responding to calls because you don't know, uh, if you, even if you're going about your job, if it's going to cost you that job in the long run. Well, I, I think, you know, the media hype on, on this, too, is uh, it drives that. I mean, annually, we have about 160 to 200 officers killed every year uh, across the U.S., and, um, you know, if, if that was in the military, there would be an outcry or, you know, those type of things. Um, but yet we look at it, the law enforcement is, I mean, it's getting to that point when we're, people are thinking that it's, that it's disposable. Yeah. Um, and it's not. Um, and when we look at officers that are starting to carry rifles, well, there's a reason for that. Um, because, you know, enough's enough on our part. Um, you know, after 33 years, you know, I'm not sure I would do it again. And, and a lot of young people who used to be attracted to it, I think might be going through those same thought processes right now. Especially once you get your family. I mean, at that point, all the families are listening to this and everything. And, and I guess I just ask people, you know, what's your vision of how life's going to be when there is no law enforcement or if there is no law enforcement? I mean, at that point, it really is every man out for himself. Do you think things are going to get better or things are going to get worse? And, and what gets me is just that, you know, the complaints about, I, I know there's some bad apples in law enforcement. We all know that. But the, the percentage. In radio, too. In radio, too. The percentage is ridiculous. I mean, for most part, when someone becomes a law enforcement officer, it's because they want to serve and protect their public. We'll, and, we'll take uh, a, so. a short break. In fact, we'll, we're going to talk in the next uh, few minutes about uh, what maybe the public can do to uh, to offer some support, other than just saying, hey, good job, as well as share a clip from a fellow who who apparently is trying to start even more trouble and maybe take a telephone call or two. Uh, that's on the way. 20 minutes of 9 o'clock. It's 58. A couple of guests joining me in studio, Tim Miller from the Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department, also Keith Thompson from Idaho State Police, and we're having a discussion this morning 
about how the hazards of the job have uh, definitely uh, been increased. Uh, you will have some folks, I'm sure, who will say, oh, it, it's not the case. But just look at the numbers. I think I read this morning. I don't know that there's been a lot of coverage. A police officer in Massachusetts yesterday sitting near a school that was part of his job every day, and uh, and, and somebody heard a gunshot. Then they saw the car literally drive off to the side of the road and a low impact into a tree. I have not been able to find anything more on that yet, but that would be number nine uh, in, in two weeks' time. And it just shows you how things are getting uh, somewhat out of hand. Hey, it's 842. Uh, 58, you're listening to Top Story as well on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I believe we have a telephone call too as well. If you guys could throw on the headphones, uh, we'll see who we have on the line. You're up next and you're on the air. Yeah, good morning. Um, was it you, Bill, yesterday played that clip from Louis Farrakhan? Yes. Yeah, I, see, I, I I just wanted to make a comment. I waited to, to hear that anything on any of the Fox News last night, Megan and Hannity and O'Reilly, nothing, nothing. And, and that clip should be played. And what was, I didn't catch it all, but wasn't he just calling for death of whites and police? Is yeah. that what? He said he saying? was recruiting a 10,000-person army. Yeah, I'd like you to make comment and have your police people or your law enforcement people comment about that because that's inciting a riot. He should be put in jail. Uh, comments from Tim and Keith on that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, th there's definitely uh, the incitement riot. I mean, there's even a kind of a homegrown terrorism there, if you will. And But, uh, you know, it's not in our jurisdiction really to do anything about that. Yeah, he was point, in a, so. at a church uh, somewhere on the East Coast. I think that was in Florida or something. Yeah, when, when that happened to take place. Well, speaking of that, I want to thank the caller. But speaking of that, I have another clip. This is from a fellow who calls himself uh, King Noble. It's uh, the, the actual video that he posted that I happened to see yesterday is uh, about three and three quarters of a minute long. But because the, the, he was such a potty mouth, I had to edit it down. There's about 20 seconds here of usable. But just take a listen to this for a minute. Uh, this one will just make you, you stand up and just wonder what we've come to. To me, with the Houston, Texas brutal execution before the public represents to me, it's this open season on killing whites and white police officers and probably killing cops, period. It's open season. Now, there you go, and you, you're hearing this, and then the defenders try to say he does not represent the Black Lives Matter or these other people and the like, but obviously they've created co the conditions. If none of this had existed, you wouldn't have these people popping up, I would imagine. Um, like I said, I, I think it's a lot of it's media-driven because they bring this, uh, they keep bringing it to light, or mm -hmm. keep bringing it to the forefront. Um, and if you look at our, our community or in our area, what you'll have is a few people will hear that. And then when they encounter police, then they'll stand up, you know, they'll puff their chest up and, and, um, do what they can to entice, uh, violence or entice some reaction from law enforcement, um, to where then they can flip the card and say, well, you know, uh, you're a racist or you're, you know, whatever it may be, but, uh, it'll be just a few that will say, well, this is my right, you know, uh, this is my freedom of speech. This is, you know, there's a point when it's true, you can say what's on your mind, but this this isn't the, the time or place to do that. And someone else out there hears that, and then they think, all right, that gives me permission to do something. Yes. We have another caller with us, and you're up next. You're on the air. We have a couple of guests with us uh, joining us this morning from Idaho State Police, Keith Thompson, and, and representing the Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department, Tim Miller. And you're on the air on News Radio 1310 KLIX. What's on your mind? Morning, Bill. I just wanted to call in and, and thank these officers for all they do. I don't think they get enough appreciation for the hard work they do and the sacrifices they make and uh, their families make. I'm I'm not a I'm no way associated with the, the police. Or any law enforcement. I just want these officers to know that uh, there are people who really appreciate all they do, and uh, I, I'm raising four small boys to, to grow up to respect and honor police, and not to fear them, and to know that they're there for their for their good. Thank you. Thank you for the call too. Uh, we have another caller with us. You're up next. You're on the air on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Morning, Bill. Morning, guys. 
Morning. Um, I think our world's going a little crazy. My prayers have been with all of the police force as they try to uh, enforce the law. And, you know, I have great respect for for law enforcement. Uh, many friends, I hunt with them, uh, and I talk to them a lot. They are our first defense against people trying to tyrannize our Constitution. I have your back, guys. I mean, I would never, ever turn my back on somebody assaulting a police officer. That would never happen. But yet, you know, if this Louis Farrakhan flipped it and said that our president was something, something, and, and we're all out war on him, he has been in jail already. But yet, because it's on the police force, no problem. Here's the double standard. The law is the law. And he's just picking and choosing which law he wants. And he wonders why we're having a problem. Well, and the two of you, you don't get to pick and choose. You've just got to basically enforce what's already written down. Yeah, we're a nation of laws, and that's what we enforce. That's what we're hired to enforce, so. We have another caller with us, and you're up next. It's 848 and 58 degrees. Uh, just to remind you, if you're just joining us, we uh, we have in studio with us Tim Miller from the Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department and Keith Thompson from Idaho State Police, and you're on the air. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, Trooper. Hi, good morning. Hey, guys. You know, I was reading yesterday, too, uh, along with the Louis Farrakhan uh, garbage, um, there's a call from a lot of these anti-gun groups that anytime they see someone with an open carry weapon, or if they notice someone with concealed carry that it's been exposed to immediately call the police and report a suspicious person claiming that they don't understand why the person's carrying a gun and that they might be dangerous to get cops to come down and uh, start questioning those of us that are legally carrying either concealed. I mostly carry my, my weapon concealed because of this. But there are those of us out there that carry for the specific purpose of our own defense and to back you guys up if need be, you know, if the call arises. So... I'm just uh, wondering your guys' take on this. Thank you. Well, once again, it, it's people enticing others to uh, to try and cause some problems. Um, and it, it wouldn't matter if it's a concealed weapon or whatever it may be. Um, you know, somebody walking down the street that's minding their own business, and then we, we get called, and so we check on them, and then pretty soon that starts to build a, an anger towards law enforcement from that person because, you know, they're minding their business. They're doing their own thing, and and uh, why does law enforcement keep harassing me? Somebody told me one time, if you know, you get pulled over, it's a wise thing to say if you have, you know, if you're if you're a licensed, you're licensed to carry. Uh, it's a wise thing to say, you know, that you you may have a, a pistol or something in the glove box or whatever, just to let that 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 officer know or that deputy know in that situation, uh, because. Being forthright about that at least gives them a little bit more to become about, I guess, in that situation. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't hurt. I, I'm going to be honest with you. In the state of Idaho, I expect everyone to be caring. Um, I think it, I, I, I tru- we truly support our Second Amendment rights and everything. Um, but, yeah, it doesn't hurt, especially if you're going to open up your glove box and all of a sudden the pistol shows up. <laughs> you know, that might cause, because your hand's right there, and the officer, you know, knows that action beats reaction. All they know is your hand is there next to a gun. That They're probably going to react to that. So it, it doesn't hurt, you know, to let them know, hey, I'm going to get my stuff. I do have a, a, a pistol in here or something. So the officer can then go ahead and take those safety measures to sure. for both of them. So no one's going to be surprised in that situation. Right. Here's a question I brought up uh, just before the break, and we'll get back to our callers in just a minute. But I, I, I said, what can the public do? Well, I mean, it's nice to hear people say that they support you, that they back you up. But at this point, what more can we do to ensure that, that it doesn't, get out of hand here like it has in some other parts of the country. See, part of it would be um, not encouraging. Uh, you know, when you hear people um, slamming the police for whatever reason, you know, it, it you can listen, but don't encourage. Um, you know, there, there's a place, if they have a, a uh, complaint for law enforcement, you know, if I had a complaint on Keith, there's avenues yes. for that to be taken care of. And be reporting it to his supervisor or making a formal complaint to the state police and let the, you know, it's just like he said, there are some, some people in law enforcement that don't need to be in. Um, but that is a, an extreme minority. This yeah. morning. Well, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, we take our complaints on our, our on our officers very seriously. Mm-hmm. We do a, a full investigation where they're, 
you know, it, it, it sounds right or doesn't sound right if that complaint comes in. Complaint comes in. Something I'd like to see too is when we're in the restaurants, don't tell your kids we're going to arrest them if they're bad. That's your job as a parent is to take care of them, <laughs> and, and, and not my job. That to, just incites you know, fear, and that incites fear on those children. Why don't we teach our next generation of children that policemen are there to protect you? They're there to help you. And, you know, come by our stations. I'm sure the, the sheriff's the same way as we are. Come by and talk to us for a little bit. If you have questions, we, we'd love to, you know, take care of any fears or any situations that you have. We, we like talking to people. I think you could just so, tell the kids, this is the safest restaurant we're in this week, you know, in that situation. Right. Well, you would hope. Yeah, yeah that would be a better <laughs> approach. There was a story this morning. I heard it uh, about 5 o'clock on Fox News. Uh, there was an officer in the Washington state who uh, was cleared. What he did was he, he responded to a burglary call. And one of the burglars decided to try to hit him with a skateboard. Well, skateboard's a pretty dangerous weapon if you get it you know, over the crown of your head. So he fired back. Didn't kill anyone, but someone was wounded in the shooting. And, and so he was brought up under investigation, and he's been cleared now. But then the reporter says, you know, he had a couple of years ago a bad performance review. But then the reporter said, but he also has had, this I think is at least the flip side of the coin that we need to hear more of, that he's also had some great citations over the years. And as I'm driving, I thought, yeah, I probably over the years too, when I've had performance reviews, I've had people say, well, you get better at this, but you did this well. And But we hear these stories sometimes, and if you only get half of that, and you didn't hear that he'd also been cited a few times for bravery and for some really good work, you'd say, oh, gee, he's a he's he's got a problem, and, and maybe that's the cause of it. But then why does the performance review even come up? That's that's what's crazy. Right, yeah. because because... We all get performance reviews in our various jobs, and some days you got a bad day, right? I mean, right. don't and look at it that reality way. Like, is, like today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most of our police officers are really active in their community, if you really take a look at that, too. So, I mean, isn't we're not anti-community. I mean, we're pro-community. Yeah, little league so. coaches, and uh, and so I had the chief of, in my hometown was uh, served on the school board as well, and so he was constantly on the move talk about 24 7 it's it's the demands you know bill i was just going to tell you that uh so far this year 83 officers yes. uh with fatals and in reality that's two percent down from last year at the same time and so i mean we look at that i look at that daily and uh you know we have gone down in the past several years you know about 10 years back we were over 200 mm -hmm. a lot of it's motor vehicle crashes but if you look at the miles that we drive and the situations we're placed in, responding to calls, um, it, that's not a bad number, although I'd rather see it be zero. I was looking at that. 32 of those, I think, are, are, are murder against police officers. But again, 10% uh, of that uh, number is just in the last couple of weeks, well, that's which is even, right. even, even, you know, that's the part that I think concerns a lot of people. Uh, we have another caller with us. It's uh, coming up on 855. Uh, you're on the air on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, yes, sir. Am I on? Uh, yes. Yes, you are. Go ahead. Uh, I, I'm thinking the problem goes a little deeper. I've, uh, I like to break the law. I, I speed, and, and I've had numerous officers stop me and ask me how fast I'm going. I said, well, I'm probably doing uh, 20 miles an hour over the speed limit. I wasn't paying much attention yet. yet. And you see, they will say, will you... Uh, <clears throat> If I let you go, will you uh, will you not speed more? I said, probably until you get out of sight. In other words, and they will laugh and say, you are, will be amazed at how many people will just outlie. They just come, they don't, they just, uh, and I guess that's kind of a normal human reaction. But I think we as a, a populace are, are we, we have no integrity anymore. And, and, and like, and, and another deal is people, did we lose the line? We may have, but he brings yeah. up a good point. You know, nobody's ever guilty of anything, right? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you get often. I mean, uh, you, there's a few really out there that have high integrity when I pull them over, and we make a lot of traffic stops per day. But, yeah, there's a lot that, that don't. So, And the reality is, though, especially in fractions, you don't have to have the intent anyway. So it's Right, right. You know, and somebody may be not even unaware. You know, they get out on... And a brand new car, and they may not even be aware that they're driving 15, 20 miles over the speed limit because of the way their old car performed. But still, it's that's not really any excuse. All right, and then there's the big tire excuse. And yes. the thing is, though, is that they'll tell you <laughs> it's probably their big tires. And though I take that into consideration then next time when you're driving down the road. I think my comment yeah. is, I don't care. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> You're speedy. <laughs> That's a pretty straightforward way to put it. it. it and the thing is, if, if I'm on the verge, our, our whole job is about changing behavior to a legal, lawful behavior. And, and, you know, if someone has integrity and someone tells me the truth, a lot of times, if, if I'm on the verge, I mean, it doesn't mean they'll get out of the ticket. But uh, if if there's that chance they might, I'm I'm liable to do that if they're honest with me. If if they're just blowing smoke, then they're probably going to get a ticket right off. So. And some people, I I guess every now and then, it, it, as you say, someone just can't. They're, they're you know it's it's maybe their belief system or whatever. They will come right out and say, I was going you know right. a 93 and an 80 or whatever it would be, and and you know at that point. It's refreshing to have that honesty sometimes. Yeah. And some people probably, I'm sure, surprisingly, have even said once in a while, you know what, I deserve the ticket. You know, I, I have to chuckle because I stopped a guy on uh, 93 South. He was doing 138. And uh, when I walked up, I, my first comment was, were you having fun tonight? And he goes, well, I was till you stopped me. You know, and that kind of honesty there is, you know, that we both laughed. And we said, well, did you learn anything, you know? His name is what, Jeff Gordon? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to thank the two of you for coming by today. And I well, hope perhaps, you know. We're we... done? I thought <laughs> we were going another hour. <laughs> I think you've got to get to the fairgrounds. No. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank Tim Miller and, uh, and Keith Thompson for coming by today and at least having this conversation on the air because uh, I think in, in, on the local level, if we can keep our heads on straight, uh, that means we won't see some of the problems that have happened elsewhere around the country. In the meantime, 9 o'clock news coming up from Fox. Bill Colley with you too as well on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. This is Top Story.